Welcome to this Tech Byte episode where we'll take a look at how to extend SAP S4 HANA cloud applications leveraging embedded Steampunk. Let's get started. At SAP TechEd 2021, there was a lot of buzz around the embedded Steampunk topic and how developers can extend their SAP S4 HANA cloud applications. During the developer keynote, we did a demo showing how to use baddies to extend the purchase requisition management application. Today, I want to spend a little more time on this topic and show some of the things that we might have skipped over during the developer keynote. So, SAP S4 HANA cloud customers and partners need a way to extend SAP functionality in a cloud-ready way while continuing to keep the core clean. Of course, we can do a side-by-side -side scenario and leverage the SAP BTP ABOP environment, also known as Steampunk, but now there is another way with embedded Steampunk, which allows ABOP developers to create custom code directly in the SAP S4 HANA cloud system. Okay, so let's jump right into the Manage Purchase Requisition Professional application. And I've already created a purchase requisition here uh, with a single line item. And I can freely change the, uh, the order quantity to whatever I want. Uh, so I'm not getting any error messages at this point. But what if I wanted to to put in some, some custom ABOP code to check some, some value and issue an error message based on the order quantity. So if I go over to the Material Master, I'll display the material that I'm using in this purchase requisition. You can see here that I've already set the um, minimum lot size quantity to 100. So I'm going to embed a check into the application that checks against this value. So let's jump over to ABOP Development Tools in Eclipse. And you can see here I'm in an S4 HANA cloud system with embedded Steampunk. And um, if we go to the released objects, you can see that I have a lot of released objects here. And um, basically, it's organized by package here. Uh, and I can browse down through all of these released objects. And a particular, um, I want to pay particular attention to the purchasing area. So MM, PUR, and then under that, the purchase requisition package, uh, and then underneath, underneath that, the enhancement spots. Um, so this is where I'm going to find um, all of those hooks that I can uh, embed some custom ABOP code into. And in, uh, for the, in this case, in this example, we're gonna use the MM, PUR, S4, PR uh, enhancement spot here. So as you can see here, I have, a, I have several, um, several to choose from, but again, I want to, the batting definition that I'm interested in is the MMPURS4PR check. And this allows me to get into the, uh, to put my hooks into the application for when uh, it checks uh, particular values of the purchase requisition before actually saving it, okay? So to do this, I'm going to go to my package and I'm going to create a uh, enhancements implementation. So Batty in, in Enhancement implementa Implementation, I'll give it a name. And um, some meaningful description here. Then I'll go ahead and browse to the particular batty enhancement spot. I've already had it pulled up here, which is why it was in that list. And I'll go ahead and click finish there. Great. So now I have my new enhancement implementation. And I'm going to go ahead and add that batty implementation based off of the check batty definition that we, that we saw earlier. Okay. So here, um, of course, I'll need an implementing class. So I'll go ahead and put in the name of my implementing class. I'll make sure that the runtime behavior, the active implementation is checked. I'll go ahead and save and then I'll click on the implementing class link here that'll take me directly to that class definition. 
give it some meaningful description here. You'll see that um, it actually uh, implements the interfaces IFMMPURS4PR check, which gives me access to that particular um, interface. Great, and now here's my code. Uh, again, it, it implements the particular interfaces I need to, to, to access this area. Um, and then um, I'll go ahead and put my code within the, the check method here. And this check method will be, will be triggered in the main code line. So here I want to get some data from the material master to check against um, my minimum lot size quantity. I can't go directly against the mark table. That's not allowed. Um, we have to go against released APIs in embedded steampunk. And that's the key here. We have to go against these uh, released APIs, whether they're CD CDS views or um, uh, particular um, OData services that are, are exposed. So uh, I know I need a, a, a select statement here to go against the, the particular um, CDS view that I need to go against, which in this, in this case is I product supply planning is where I'm going to get that minimum lot size quantity. I'm going to join that with the, the purchase requisition item table that's coming in into the, uh, into the method here. I'm going to join that on the, the material and the plant fields. Uh, then I'll put that data back into an internal table and then work with that internal table. Looping through that internal table and then checking the order quantity against the minimum lot size quantity. If it's less than that minimum lot size quantity, then I'll go ahead and issue an error message there. Okay, I'll save. And then I'll go ahead and activate um, all of my objects here. So now I have my, my batty implementation active. I can um, go ahead and flip back to the purchase requisition management screen. Uh, I'll go ahead and refresh that, make sure I pick up the changes to the code. Um, I'll go ahead and go back into my purchase requisition uh, and try to change the order quantity and see what happens here. Yeah, I'll change it to 50. And now I'm getting an error message because that 50 again is less than the minimum lot size quantity that I retrieve from the material master. I'm getting that error message. Okay. But that's not all guys. Um, so what I, I can also debug my application in embedded steampunk. So I can set a breakpoint right there at my select statement. And then I can um, go ahead and trigger uh, the debug session by going back to the application and going into edit mode uh, and then changing the quantity again. And this time control is sent back to the debugger in EDT. And then I can, of course, step through the code like any other uh, ABAP, uh, any ABAP code. And I can inspect the, the uh, internal table values um, just as before, same behavior. Uh, we can just do that within the embedded steampunk environment. Thanks again for joining this SAP Tech Bytes episode.